Yo, what's going on guys? It's me, the Ninja Fury here. Time for another exciting review of... I keep doing this so many times. Well, not too many times, but... My Little Pony... Season 9, Episode 21. So this episode of MLP, I have to say, is definitely going on one of my other favorites. Because, wow, like... Holy crap, I did not... I was very surprised how this episode actually turned out. And this concludes the Daring Do arc. And it's coming to a close. That's it. It's already wrapped up. Because this episode wraps up the Daring Do arc. Wraps up the whole career. You know, it's not Alex Owen. Well, Alex Owen pretty much well, was going to try to be one of those. I'm about to end this whole, you know... I'm about to end this whole mayor's career, pretty much. But it went, it, well, it tried to go that way, but unfortunately it didn't. So this week's episode, or this episode in general, I know. By the way, I apologize for the late review. It's just, I've been busy, like, doing a little bit of other things and getting prepared for another video. So, that's why. But anyways, with this episode, it turns out that Daring Do basically has some competition when it comes to somebody writing a novel or pretty much running your own novel of stuff that's pretty much uh, the adventures of Daring Do of her being exposed that her adventures are real and trying to actually expose her for being a fake and a fraud like oh this wasn't fantasy this actually happened and shit like that and many other stuff that like relates to like you know all oh, this was a lie this was nothing but a fraud you know fake news and pretty much you know stuff like that so, you pretty much get the gist of it, so, it's pretty much like, just propaganda and whatnot, just trying to slam her and just ruin like, her career, pretty much. So, when it comes to that afterwards, you find out that it's, what a surprise, um, Canabula, once again, Dr. Cavalier, Cavaliera, 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 we're, we're gonna go with that, Dr. Cavaliera, once again, of course, should have seen this coming from a mile away. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so we kind of already saw this coming from a mile away. That we knew that he was the one that was actually trying to ruin her career and ruin everything. But Fluttershy pretty much was like, well, you know, maybe, you know, he has his side of the story or he has his own side on, you know, why he's actually doing this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe there's a certain side of things that, you know, we don't know. And maybe there's something that's... You know, like, I gotta see it from his perspective, like, you know what I mean? I wanna know if, you know, from what his side of the story is, what he really does is. Why does he try to steal ancient relics? Why is he trying to, you know, is he really trying to sell them for greed, or is it some kind of, like, other kind of purpose in life? So that's what Fletcher pretty much wants to know, and why she actually goes with them on this journey, you know, to, you know, gain some trust. And it was really cool just to see, like, Fletcher just chain, chain some, like, freaking cheetahs, and some, like, yeah, some, like, cheetahs, or a tiger, pretty much, and like, all mixed into one. And then we had this, like, one little kitten, and I'm just like, what the hell? So, I mean, or little cat, kitten, whatever. So, that was, like, kind of funny, too. It's just, like, that one little short one, like, at the very end. But then it was really cool, because, like, Fluttershy, uh, for, um, you know, activated, um, Conqueror's Hockey, I think it's, or Bullshit Old Hockey, pretty much, because she had the power to tame the animals, like, Shanks and... Like Luffy, you know, characters you would think in that verse. And it reminds me exactly again. If Fluttershy, I guess Fluttershy would be like a conqueror's hockey because she would know exactly how to control and, 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 you know, tame wild animals and beasts and actually, you know, control them when they're actually, you know, running them luck, running them wild. But obviously, also because of that, Fluttershy is an expert with all kinds of animals, so it makes sense. But I really just love how her character just keeps on. Um, Rolling. Like, ever since, I would say, season four, around there, like, season four, she has grown spectacularly as a character in the show, 
and I absolutely love it, especially in this episode because it shows that, you know, there is, you know, even though, you know, her overkindness, you know, her basically trying to be the more calm and sincere one may get her in trouble, but, you know, to be fair, at least, you know, even though it does kind of get her in trouble a bit, she overcomes that in the end because someone is going to try to pull her out of it and stuff like that. So, you know, balance herself out. So, regardless, it's fine. So, you know, while she falls in there, you know, she falls for the obvious show that was a prize. It was for Bree this entire time that um, Dr. Caballero was actually going to use it for. Well, of course, makes perfect sense. Meanwhile, I just realized the Rainbow Dash, like, I really wish it was Rainbow Dash. I was actually the one that actually, you know, perceived things here, but. No, it was actually Fluttershy, and props to Fluttershy. So, yeah, like, Rainbow Dash is just there, basically, in the episode. So, okay, maybe it's, like, far from perfect. I would have said it's a really amazing episode, or just, you know what, I already know I'm going to give the score, so. It's just going to be a little bit points down, but nothing, like, too extreme or whatever, because this was actually... I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could, but at the same time, I just really like how this was presented. And then, of course, you know, we have Over Zoro pretty much, you know, setting up all sorts of traps and daring do Rainbow Dash and, you know, trying to actually get the relics back and whatnot. And she explains on why she actually really needs the relics because someone like you will basically, you know, have something like this. This could be part of history. And I can use this pretty much to, you know, play my friendly, you know, like, you know, stuff like that. Like, we get her side of the story, and then we get Ali Zoro's side of the story. Now, Ali Zoro was really surprised because his, on the other hand, is basically protecting the actual artifacts from the, uh, the gargoyle, uh, lion things that are there. I forget exactly what they are. Put down in the comment section below if you guys remember. Because those gargoyle bat things look really cool. And... I couldn't really believe that he was actually the one protecting them in order to actually for them not to attack them and whatnot, because they're pretty much like the guardians themselves, so it makes sense. So I did actually like that though, that was actually really cool just to see that emotion. I never expected something like that, because I was like, okay, I just thought it was just something like dude who was just like protecting, you know, relics and whatnot, like I didn't really think that actually meant something, because Fluttershy was also the one to, once again, comprehend him to actually do all that, which I really do like this calm, cool, and collect the side of Fluttershy. I mean, yeah, we have seen it now multiple throughout the season of House of but I really just love the fact that she actually just, like, shows it in a way where, you know, she can still, she can, you know, lose her balance of cool sometimes, but, like, it depends, really, on how the situation turns out. And I really did like the plot was at the end that what happens is that Alizaro is the one that puts Gary Yu and Delta Kariyama out of business when it comes to, well, just out, not out of business, but you get the gist. Like, their books weren't sung that well. So at the end of the day, he was the one that was actually telling the true stories, and yeah. So after we got that reveal, yeah, no more daring do adventures. That's. Pretty much it. Well, obviously the series is gonna be over anyway, so we have to find something to wrap it up, I guess. And this is a really great way to wrap up the Daring Do arc. And honestly, I don't mind it. This was actually really cool the way they just wrap things up, and it all fit perfectly. So it was fun. I mean, I think Rainbow Dash, in my opinion, should have had like the better kind of screen. Well, she could have at least had more screen time, but. You know what, it's far from perfect, it's it's close to perfect, but not really perfect, but I will give this one probably a 4.5 out of 5, just knocking it down a bit, so 4.5 out of 5, so a really great episode overall, just with a little bit of just knocking it down for like, I guess because of Rainbow Dash, in my opinion, should have been the one to actually really game Roman Montem when it comes to this lesson, but you know, she didn't because she was just assuming, ah, oh, don't worry about Dr. Carbera, he's just the villain as he always does. Well, even though we kind of predicted that. But still, you know what, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be fair, I'm gonna give it a 4.5 because I still really enjoyed the way this was all, you know, handled and whatnot. I like the adventure, obviously. Once again, we got another great adventure of Fluttershy traveling with Dr. Caballera and Rainbow Dash and Darren Dude finally following through, you know, to where the temple is for the 
you know, trying to, you know, you know, save Fluttershy, you know, from the obvious, you know, deception that he was going to do. But in the end, it was really cool that he actually did see what was happening. He was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I should try to trust her more often. Maybe she won't be a snitch and stuff like that. And, you know, trying to betray us in a way. Which she didn't, and she kept her word, so... Yeah, so overall, this was actually a really great episode. Like, I actually really enjoyed this one than I thought I... That I kind of thought I would. So yeah, there you go. That is episode 21... 21? Of MOP Season 9. Uh, right there. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of this episode of MOP. And oh boy... The end game is getting even much nearer. We only have two more regular episodes left, and then the big Schlaganza finale with three episodes on one weekend. <sighs> oh boy. Talk about videos I have to But yeah. Oh boy. That's gonna be quite a weekend. So, well, surprisingly, it's not even gonna be in the morning. It's gonna be mainly at night, which I'm very surprised with too, so. Yeah, that's also very surprising. I didn't really think we are going to be getting it at night. I thought it was going to be more like during the day like always. Or at least up to like 12.30ish or something. But Or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But oh, well, hey. You know, 7 to 8 o'clock at night. That's kind of fine. Alright. That's reasonable for this kind of thing. So they're really making a big deal of this. Because then of course we have like a behind the scenes scene that's going to happen. Which I'm going to watch that of course. That's going to be quite interesting. So yeah, see you guys next week for episode 22. This one might kind of surprise you on what the concept is. Even though there might be some things that are going to be maybe not the greatest, but still regardless. So that's it. I'm pretty much done. So yeah, that's it. So I'll see you guys for the next one for next week, episode 22. Be sure to rate the video, comment, subscribe, click that bell, join the squad boys. Follow me on social media, plug in on my gamer tags as well. Peace, soul, love, chicken, grace, and the sky is the limit. And our manga fans keep supporting which we do what you watch and bronies. Bro ho for about not so many times, but you know, the end is near, so might as well get them now. Bro ho. So see you guys for episode 22. Later. Bye bye.